road trips aren't about the destination. If you want to get somewhere far, you can just fly there. In our case, road trips are about accomplishing something. We've driven from Florida to Alaska, Key West to Nova Scotia, we've driven in Teslas and race cars, and now, our most ambitious trip yet. We're going to take our two Mazda FD RX-7s and drive them to all 48 continental states in the US. Seems like if we would have left the rotary, we wouldn't be having nearly so many stops. Just gotta torque the wheels and we'll be good. Things are going great. <sighs> Welcome back to the RX-7 road trip. We're here in Wisconsin. My car has been ready to go for some time. All it needed was a little oil change. Thorne's car is still being worked on inside. So I uh, think he's gonna need a little kick in the pants because uh, if left to his own devices, uh, the car will stay here forever and continue to be worked on because it's not done. Um, so I'm gonna go uh, get him rolling and uh, we'll, we'll get out of here. Here. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hey. How's it going? Good. We got a lot of stuff done to this car. This whole front end has new stainless steel braided lines here. We got some softer motor mounts in, so less vibration. Good. And uh, we just got this new power steering line put on, so that's not going to leak anymore. Well, Ben, we, you know, this is a road trip. It's not a yeah, build series. That's, that's fine. That's, that's not a big deal. I mean, I don't want my power steering to be leaking, so I can just get maybe a clamp for that to tighten this down. No, no. Come on, buddy. No, nope. no, we gotta go. I got also, I gotta measure the oh, um, steering on. rack. I think the tie rods are not the right length. Can you just get a tape measure real quick? Can you measure that? Man, this car is so much better. It feels like a car now rather than a project car. I mean, everything feels a lot smoother having softer motor mounts. We've also put some interior pieces in, uh, so it's, you know, a little bit more complete in here. And uh, softer motor mounts make a world of difference. It's just so much smoother. I, I have a working speedometer now. What, what a novel concept. This car, this car, we're gonna make it through all 48 states. We're gonna do it. My RX-7, the rotary got a little bit of uh... TLC itself, we uh, did an oil change on it. Nice little alignment. Rotary will be running happy with that fresh new oil as if I don't put enough in already. The rotary is running great, but as we head deeper into the Midwest, the availability of the 93 octane, which my car is tuned on, is running out. I guess we haven't really discussed it too much before, but the RX-7 with the rotary has a kind of interesting procedure once you get to the gas station. So, of course, you're gonna wanna put fuel in, but before you put fuel in, uh, you want to add some additives. You want to put premix in, that'll help lubricate the apex seals in the engine. I swung by Advanced Auto and I picked up some uh, octane booster. And this is going to artificially raise the octane uh, of the fuel. And then we'll fill up on 91 octane and check the uh, engine oil level and we should be good to go. We've driven through 17 states now, and we're headed directly west. As we get further from the east coast, I'm getting more and more nervous, because we don't have any friends or contacts out here in the Midwest if we break down. We're on our own now. Well, not completely on our own. Thankfully, advanced auto parts are everywhere. Little dum dum Ben left my fuel cap at a gas station. So thankfully, Advance has new gas caps for an RX-7. Believe that? Look at this. Does it fit? Does it fit? Perfect. Perfect. Now I won't spill fuel down the side of my vinyl wrap. <laughs> the Midwest has a much different landscape than we're used to. On the East Coast where we live, it's very green and mountainous. But out here in the Midwest, it's a completely different kind of beautiful. 
The flatland, the vibrant sunsets, and the strange tourist attractions. It's a big bicycle. Yeah. Front wheel drive. Yeah. Somebody with worse gear ratios than you. <laughs> That's true. Wonder what RPM he's at when he's going 75. The Midwest is a sprawling grassland that is impressive in its own right, but once you've seen it, it's kind of just a lot more of the same. So we just keep driving until something catches our eye. He's kind of cut, you know? He is pretty cut. Yeah. yeah. Uh, bulky. Yeah. So he's been standing here for 52 years with no pants on. Yeah, it must be cold. He's also got nothing else going on down there. Totally smooth. Yeah. And proud of it, apparently. A role model for us all. We are working our way across the square states of the Midwest. We're driving at somewhat of a zigzag pattern in order to hit every state along the way. And we're 21 states down now as we head into South Dakota. What is it with uh, the Midwest and making things really big? I well, you know what they say. Everything looks smaller when there's absolutely nothing? Yep. <laughs> Normally, I'm happy to go fast, but these 80 mile an hour speed limits are killing me. At 80 miles an hour, my RPMs are at 4,500. The noise and vibration is getting unbearable. Thankfully, I've got a solution. Earmuffs. Hearing protection makes this way easier to cope with. I don't know why it took me so long to buy some. You might have thought that road trips are about driving from one place to another, and doing a 48 state road trip that's essentially ending in the same place it started seems kind of funky. But after hitting our 22nd state now, there's a weird sense of accomplishment that I'm getting. Doing this trip has put me out somewhere that I wouldn't normally travel to, and that's pretty cool. What is this place? This is the geographical center of the nation, I think. What does that mean? Uh, I think that means we're in the exact middle of the country. I think that takes into account Alaska though, because we are still kind of on the north side. They claimed it, so it must be sure. Yeah, I think they, this town just felt like they really needed something and- yeah, maybe, it got us to stop. They just made the math work. Yeah. So we've hit 21 states now? Well, 22, we just hit Wyoming. So we're almost halfway. It's 80 mile an hour speed limits are killing me. Yeah, I've, uh, I've gotten uh, incredibly bad gas mileage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Just yeah. impressively bad. Especially at night with the headlights up. I think I literally got like 13 miles to the gallon last night just Oof. driving. Yeah. We're really out in the middle of nowhere now. We're headed up to hit North Dakota. Because this isn't a commonly driven route, we've had to turn off the interstate and drive hours into the wilderness. A perfect time to break down. Well, here we are in the middle of nowhere. The car started acting a little bit weird. I got on boost and it was only making 12 pounds of boost. It should be making 17. And I uh, started looking around for a vacuum leak or something. I couldn't find anything. And then I bend down here and look at my front intercooler pipe and it's cracked. My guess is that it's just from the shock of the engine torquing back and forth, uh, putting stress on that pipe. And because it's solid and the engine's moving back and forth, it's just putting stress on that pipe until, well, now it's cracked, so. Ah! So I think the torque of the engine is put stress on the pipe, cracked it all the way around. Honda engines do love to vibrate. <laughs> yeah, they do. Of course, all of my issues are like the aftermarket stuff. Now I know that I, I want to change the intercooler setup. I, I thought it was a little too rigid to start with, but I was like, eh, it'll probably be fine. I didn't think, because the engine's torquing this way, I didn't think it would crack it. I'm going to tape this and then just give it a pull and see what happens. I'm trying double-sided tape. I'm trying multiple types of tape. If that helps. Oh. Yeah, because rotaries are unreliable. Seems like if we would have left the rotary, wouldn't be having nearly so many stops. Okay. Good to go. Did you just say it was good to go, Thorn? Or might you be a little bit premature? Just gotta torque the wheels and we'll be good. 
Ben's ridiculous case swap has broken more times than I can count on this trip. He should have just stuck with the rotary, and I'm going to prove it. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, hey, how you doing? Hey, I figured, you know, since you're doing your little boost test here, I might as well just see how much boost I'm making. Thought maybe we could kind of do it with some synchronicity, just, you know, simultaneous boost tests, right? Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Uh, you think this is the right place to do that? Yeah, I think we'll be fine. Okay, uh, I'll honk my horn three times. We'll just go on the third time, just to make sure we're doing it at the same time. Um, and also, just to sweeten the pot, scientifically speaking, I was thinking uh, if I make more boost than you, then maybe you just admit that rotaries are the better engine? Uh, so Ben, what do I get if I win? If you make more boost than me, you can do whatever you want. You get whatever you want, buddy. Anything I want. Anything you want. All right, man. There's no chance. On three? On three, yeah. PSI actually, but that's enough apparently. Yeah, Thorne, how do you feel about a rematch, big guy? No! I, I, I think your side of the road had more traction than mine though. I, I was slipping. Ben, you know what this means. Ben, you wouldn't. Oh yeah, buddy. God. Unfortunately, as we drove into Montana, I couldn't cash in on our deal because Ben's stupid Wankel engine broke down. Oh crap. Yeah, I was just uh, driving along and I started hearing a hissing sound. <clears throat> And uh, I looked up and I saw just kind of like mist water vapor coming out of my hood. And it was uh, this line had disconnected right here. Um, and uh, just venting coolant. And I saw my temp start to go up, so I turned it off. But yeah, luckily it's not anything severe. Just something rattled off. Yep. Sick. Thanks. I shouldn't be so optimistic. There's a reason that coolant line popped off, and that reason is that the coolant temperature rose so high, the resulting pressure pushed the coolant overflow line off. That means there's got to be a coolant leak somewhere that caused the level to drop and got the engine hot in the first place. Oh, yeah. That looks low. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. The engine takes a lot of water, probably half a gallon, which means it's been leaking for some time. I can't find the leak here on the side of the highway, so I'm going to do what I can to get the car off and somewhere safe. Okay, let's try and make some progress. Coolant temp is high. All right, there's an exit up here, but it's like a mile, maybe. Uh, not looking great. This is our fourth road trip now, and we kept saying that we wanted to like take cars that were like less reliable because it was getting boring and we couldn't find anything unreliable enough. I think we found just the cars for the trip. The car won't stop foaming air bubbles from the cooling system, which means this could be a worst case scenario. Oh, my fingertips are hot. Woo! How are you doing? They're hot. That's wow. Hot. Air bubbles entering the cooling system can mean the engine's coolant seals have failed, which would require a full rebuild. That's a very common issue with rotary engines when they overheat, and I'm worried this might be the case with mine. This is not bleeding, and we've literally run out of the coolant that we bought. We've put a whole gallon in. Yeah, this is probably going to have to stay here tonight, and then we'll uh, 
go to you know advance in the morning and try and get the proper tools to bleed it properly, get more coolant, and then see if we can get it done. But uh, even if we properly bleed it, I'm not looking. I'm not not very uh, optimistic. After some rest, we've had a chance to think over the issue. There has to be a coolant leak somewhere, and the best way to find it would be a coolant pressure tester. So we'll take the support vehicle an hour to the closest car quest and rent one out. So what we were looking for is 50-50 coolant, three gallons of that. We're looking for a special coolant funnel, paper towels, five rolls, and then a coolant pressure tester if they've got it. With a proper bleeder funnel and more coolant, we can actually bleed the system properly. Unsurprisingly, we can't get all the air out of the system. So, it's time to pressure test it and find where the leak is. Okay, we got it right about 10 or 11 PSI. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm watching it yeah. actively drip. Yeah, 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 and I've already wiped it down. Yeah, it's definitely leaking out of that hose. If we know where it started from. We know why the coolant level was getting low. Right. And we know, you know, why air gun. If it's been leaking like this the whole trip, that's surprise. Like that's impressive. I'm I'm surprised that we didn't notice. Yeah, there was no when you pull it out parking lots. Yeah. Like no drip, no puddles or anything. I mean, I never noticed. Them. I didn't either. Yeah. And we can see where the leak is, which means hopefully it's not coolant seals <laughs> inside <laughs> the engine. Let's uh let's burn a few more hours and uh, swap that hose out. Yeah. We might make it back on the road today. Hopefully. Turns out, the cooling system is actually leaking from multiple places. We got options. Two spots at the radiator hose and one on the thermostat housing. After a few more trips, we've got multiple hoses and some gasket sealer to plug up those leaks. Just a little, little bit of cutting, so... Yeah. <sighs> oh, no. But it's like literally like ripped. Like there's like hanging metal. I can't believe I did that. Fuck. So we're still out here. The car has been here for almost a day now. Uh, we just tried to fix it and uh, made good progress, but I used a little bit too much force and I damaged the radiator. And now at this point, there's nothing we can do by ourselves. So we're gonna get the car towed up the road to a town called Billings, about an hour and a half away. Hopefully he can do some fab work and fix up the radiator, but realistically, uh, the leaks might have sprung up because of some other problem and the engine from overheating as much as it did last night, you know, the engine might be shot. So it's something I'm keeping in mind. It's something I'm prepared for, but we got to, you know, you got to take it one step at a time. So let's just get this thing towed, see if we can get her fixed up and get back on the road without any more problems, but we'll see. Things are going great. See what the issue is here. Uh, the outlet on this radiator is crinkled. I think that's the best way I can describe this. That's gonna have to be cut off and a new pipe's gonna have to be welded on that, which thankfully, there's another guy in town here in Billings that has some exact diameter aluminum piping and he's gonna come by and bring that by. Hopefully, we'll be able to get that welded on, put this back in the car, and we'll be on our way. And huge shout out to, to Southern Comfort Fabrication. I mean, he's really saving us here. Uh, in the middle, I mean, dead middle of Montana. 
So really awesome. While Ben works on reinstalling his radiator, I figured I might as well get my intercooler crack welded up. I drove my car here uh, on that tape patch. I don't know if you remember that. Um, so I wanted to get that welded up. Whoa. See the crack? Yeah, she's big. Oof. That's okay. Jared welded up my pipe in no time, and we actually welded it a bit shorter so there's some flex. Wow, that's actually really loud. <laughs> we made it just a little bit shorter, and you can see a very small gap between the pipe and the turbo now, uh, which is great because that's gonna allow the pipe to have some flex when the engine's moving back and forth. If you look on the other side, these vibrant HD clamps are really great because they're really strong, but also they allow some flex. Uh, so these pipes aren't gonna crack, because, you know, there's a lot of flex happening. After getting the radiator hooked up, I decide to give it another pressure test to see if we fixed all the leaks. Right, so, uh, day two of, day two? Day two of the RX-7 still being broken? I think so. Yeah, yeah. so the RX-7 is still broken. Um, we did get a new neck welded on after I destroyed the first one, uh, trying to fix, ironically, the cooling system. Lovely welds, uh, this should work great. Unfortunately, we pressure tested the system last night after uh, getting the uh, radiator fixed back up, and we found there are more leaks in the radiator that weren't for me. So that makes me feel a little better, but this might actually have been the source of all my problems. Daylight's a burning, uh, time's a wasting, and this is uh, not looking very much like a road trip. So let's see if we can get back onto the road with some fixes. There comes a point where you just have to cut your losses and do what needs to be done to get a car running again even if it might not be the proper way to do something. And JB Weld might just be the improper solution that will fix all of my problems, or at least fix them well enough that I can drive another 5,000 miles. But even then, I'm still not sure that the motor is even good anymore. the system for hours. We've gone through a ton of coolant, but the engine is still overheating and making bubbles. So we keep repeating the same process over and over. Run the car till it gets hot, turn it off, cool the car down, fill it up with coolant, and do it again. But every time we let the car warm up, this happens. Because it just it does not stop doing that. And the temperature doesn't come down up in the high 90s, mid 90s right now, 96. Unfortunately, this looks like a textbook case of blown coolant seals. The Rotary RX-7 might be done. 90, 90. We've been through this before. Bubbling. It's good. Okay. But I'm not quitting. I'll bleed this system all night if I have to. I'm not going to give up on this car. I don't care how long it takes. And sometimes that perseverance pays off. As it turns out, perseverance was exactly what the rotary needed. It had simply taken on so much air with the system open, it needed hours to bleed. And while the JB Weld was more of a patch than a fix, it was good enough to get back on the road. We are back on the road after what seems like a very grim situation possibly where I was somewhat confident that my engine had actually been ruined by overheating. It's holding temperature and it's running fine. It holds steady at 83 degrees Celsius, about 178, 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Thanks to the outrageous generosity of our buddy Jared, who let me store my car in his garage and work on it there and showed us the most incredible hospitality. Man, Ben, I am, uh, I'm honestly kind of shocked. I, I thought there for a minute we might have been done. Yeah, you and me both, buddy. I was, uh, for, for about a five minute period, I was 100% sure that my motor was shot. I, uh, I may or may not have been looking up old beat up Hondas to buy you just so you could finish the trip. Thank the Lord it's not gonna come to that. Uh, 
Yeah, man, I'm friggin' over the moon. She's running like a top. I'm oddly relieved that my biggest inconvenience has gone back to putting Octane Booster and Premix into my gas every 200 miles. Montana is an absolutely gorgeous state. Maybe my favorite state so far. It's filled with great scenery and tons of wildlife. After spending three days in Montana, we finally made it to a new state. Our 25th state, Idaho. Idaho is spectacular. We seem to have hit a winding back road over some snow-covered mountains. Perfect cold temperatures to make sure Ben's rotary doesn't overheat. Woo! It's cold. Oh, man. My car is, like, not keeping up to temp. Yeah? Yeah. Is your car not keeping up to temp? No, it's not. Wow. Oh, wow. This is cool. Dude, Idaho, every time we come here in the winter, frickin' slaps. Yeah, dude. Look at that scenery. Dude. <laughs> ah. <laughs> he just obliterated. I didn't pack it good enough. Yeah, Idaho has got it going on. This is probably the most beautiful thing we've seen so far. But we've still got 23 states to go. Temperature is warming up as we come off the mountain and into Washington State. But we're not leaving Idaho empty-handed. We've taken all the dirt, dust, salt, and road grime that we could stick onto our cars. We've covered 500 miles or something today. For a second there, I forgot that I was doing this in a RX-7. One of the crazier things I think I've done in my life. Take the world by fire. Gonna build an empire. I think this is uh, I think this is state number 27, 28. I, I lost count a bit ago, but welcome to California. Yeah, this is uh, northeastern Cal, nor northeast Cal. Hey, well, uh, we made it. Let's uh, let's go ahead and turn around right here and uh, head back. Well, that was it. Yeah, I mean we we technically just hit California. Yeah, yeah, I guess we did hit California. Not much else to offer in this state, I guess. Uh, famously uh, boring state, California. Yeah, there's probably nothing on like the coast or maybe Southern California. There's not much to see down there. Time to head back east. Uh, let's go to Nevada. Now, Nevada is a state I can get behind. Nevada looks a lot like Oregon, or at least the part that we drove through. Big open flat land with no other cars in sight. You could come to a dead stop on the highway and just walk around. The road spread for miles in both directions without another soul in sight. Both of our dirt covered RX-7s were doing great, but this would not be a good time to break down. Literally hundreds of miles from the modern world. As peaceful as it is being separated from the rest of humanity, it's time to head back to civilization. We're headed east to Utah.
Eventually, we made it back to civilization, just outside the great Bonneville Salt Flats, where we raced the Evo against the Tesla on the last road trip. Back at the salt flats. Yeah, probably don't need to drive on it again this time. I think ours are dirty enough as it is. Yeah, and uh, probably don't need to race the cars because I think we know how that would turn out. No! No! Oh my God! Yeah, I'd probably uh, just overheat my engine terminally this time. Speaking of, speaking of races, uh, you remember that bet that we had? No. Bet no. Bet. You can do whatever you want. You get whatever you want, buddy. Uh, no, Ben. I I pretty distinctively remember uh, a couple days ago when we had that uh, drag race. Anything I want. Anything you want. That drag race. I remember, Ben. Mm -hmm. That was before my breakdowns, bud. Mm -hmm. I've, it's I've been days of agony for me, just staring at that temp gauge. My 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 radiator. Remember, I was staring at that sucker, pissing cool. Yeah, I come on now. Don't you think I've suffered enough? No, Ben. I don't think you have. <laughs> Come on, Ben. It's fine. It'll grow out. It's not a big deal. Ben, there's honestly no reason to be upset. I, 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 I think, I think it looks really good. It's an honor to, to be, you know, compared to that anime character. Ben, I am not an anime character. I am a human being. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you just take the glasses off, honestly, spitting image. I will never forgive you for this. Well, at least KSK wins his races. Just laugh it up, bud. Enjoy while you can. Just wait, Ben. You're going to have tons of matches on Tinder now. Honestly, all things considered, I, I think it was for the best. For the best? Ben, I look like Guy Fieri. We're, we're genuinely no longer friends. Man, someone's a bit salty. Someone's a bit bleached. You stupid weeb! 